So yeah, let's get started uh, when Bass yeah, gets here. Fine. Yeah, he gets here. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, the main reason I wanted to have this meeting is just to reach out and see if, um, you know, see how Aegis and the new administration would work together. See if there's any, you know, strategic goals that you guys had that we would be able to help you with. I like to make it intentionally awkward. What's the muff going? Okay. Um... I guess first and foremost, do you want to explain to me what Aegis is in your um, in your view, like what you guys see it as? We see it as a quasi-governmental, you know, agency that basically oversees a lot of the administrative. Oh my god! Functions. If Tim can get um, him to ask him to explain it in layman's so terms, then example, he's won this meeting. A lot of the then it's GG. That PD just either doesn't have the time or the interest in pursuing. You know, our main push right now has been trying to regulate the storefronts. We've been working on doing some investigations there that would allow us to, you know, figure out whether or not storefronts are operating within the guidelines, whether or not up, they Robert? follow their specializations, whether or not they're active, and be able to, you know, use those investigations to say, okay, because you're not operating the way you should, we think you should pass the opportunity on to somebody else who would be able to take that chance and run with it. Okay. Um, I know Eve mentioned to me, you guys have a border patrol as well too, right? For the Sanguine Islands? Robert, thank you for the five bomb. Yeah, so we're what working with the Watch Shark Ranger unit. Uh, we're trying to outfit them with what they need to be better at enforcing, you know, the laws of the sea and be able to do their jobs better. Okay. Um, I know Eve also mentioned you do have a few task force for storefronts going already or are people already looking into them. Yep, we do have people looking into them. We just finished an uh, mm. initial round of investigations, and we are working on issuing warnings so that the businesses that don't exactly follow the guidelines know the best way that they can get in compliance with them. Um, is there any like current storefronts that are needing to be like, I guess either striked or shut down yet. We're still working through the investigations. I know there's been a couple instances. Um, I don't know the storefront off the top of my head, but I think one of them is selling a human finger. And obviously that's not a great thing for them to be selling. So the idea being Jesus that Christ. because that's come to our attention, we can now pass on the information that we learned to PD. They can initiate you know, a further investigation and be able to figure out, are they storing body parts there? Are they doing illegal things? So the process is essentially we have, for example, we, our agents are sourced into um, different areas of all the hubs and we have come to the first oh my god yes that is that tv slash beta the best bob website yeah, on the web on the website on the on the internet even so the next process is they will be sent formal warnings and they'll have a time frame to rectify those um, problems and then after that when we start our next rounds in a week or two um if those people have the same issues again even after we've sat down and talked to them and that's when we will be issuing warn uh, a second warning and then a strike. When we reach a fourth strike, when we do shut down the business, those businesses have a chance to come to the mayor's office to sit down with you guys. Ooh, see if they are allowed to reopen their storefronts again. So the fourth strike shuts down the business or it's after the fourth strike? Uh, the fourth the third one, right? Uh, uh, yeah, the way the legislation is written, it should be the third one. Third strike yeah, shuts them down. Right? Who the hell are you? It's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's it's Bass. It's Bass. That's the commissioner. Nice Bass. It's Bass. So Jesus we Christ. figured at least for the first round of investigations, because this is such a brand new structure, that we would give warnings before issuing strikes and fines. Right. <laughs> okay. 
Slash me ignores so the stupid looking man. Work hand in hand with Slash me can't, can't, can't read his mind. <laughs> okay, so if, uh, if, say, an officer had wanted to look into a storefront, Slash me feels happy. <laughs> like, how am I gonna, okay. For that? No. No. No, they okay. can already, they can do their jobs. Aegis is just there because they were not doing their jobs. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Yeah, our goal is basically to supplement PD on the civil side of it to do that investigate, you know, that investigative work. And if something is wrong, if something is actionable, then we send it to PD and, you know, we're doing the, you know, that initial investigation work on their behalf. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's what we yep. had an officer reach out to us recently about that. So and that's what a lot of it is just kind of um, getting a what exactly, you know, needs to be done, what exactly it is that y'all do, who exactly is, you know, in Aegis, you know, because I think a lot of people, the mystery is what makes them so uneasy. And if they get those answers, then they'll feel like, oh, well, less threatened, I guess, is the best way to put it, if you understand what I'm saying. Yeah, no, understandably. And, I mean, creating a new thing like this from <laughs> scratch, uh, obviously, you know, it takes some time to get things up and running. It takes some time to establish procedures to, you know, figure out exactly how we're going to run. Um, but we're getting there, and I think, you know, after this initial round of investigations, we are still, you know, iterating through the process. Understandable. All right. Uh, just to speak on the PD side of things as far as ages, it has created a lot of jobs. It has uh, empowered a lot of civilians and has made our process a lot easier because in the past, we had a lot of criminals that would use the storefront uh, enterprise as a way to sell things that they would manufacture. I already talked about it. And, and uh, mm -hmm. ages has done a good job so far of shutting that down and making sure they're proactive on, you know, um, on storefronts to make sure that everybody follows the guidelines and rules set in place by ages. Good, good. That's wonderful to hear. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. If there's any PD officers who do reach out to the mayor's office, you know, with that same question, you can direct them to Brian, because he is the head of the storefront task force, and um, he is looking for investigators who are passionate about, you know, detective work as well. So if they okay. do want to, if they do want to look into that, nothing is stopping them from doing it. However, um, Aegis is there to make it much easier to do so, as the okay. footwork is already there. And that's Brian Knight, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, we've had a meeting with a few other people uh, regarding some storefronts, because I kind of brought up your names a few times and who they could reach out to if it's not, you know, obviously PD investigating them. Yeah. We spoke with Eric today, and there's a few shops around town that are selling parachutes, which are essentially, they're not an outdoorsy or like a place you believe a parachute should be sold, right? It's not Speedies. It's not BCB or Lizard Dicks. It's places that were, I guess, oh, essentially shit. at first, their specialization has changed since uh, the first iteration of their shops. And now uh -huh. some places are selling things that uh, they didn't initially start with. So, for example, Anime City sells parachutes and chest armor and Pokeballs. Um, okay, I can speak on this. This is a factory issue. I had this conversation with Turbo okay. or John Miller a very long time ago where I told him that sometimes it doesn't really make sense that some stores, you know, sell certain things. Like, do I really want to go to a hardware store and get a boba tea while I'm picking up, you know, a repair kit right. or, yeah. you know, things like that. And he said, um, he had reiterated that it doesn't really matter if it's in the specialization, which is, you know, Anime City, for example, is outdoor and survival. And unfortunately, outdoor and survival includes parachutes. Right. Um, okay. So we can't do anything about it. It's in the specialization that um, falls on the factory to um, monitor because that was their decision that if they wanted to be specific, I'm so sorry, okay. Nancy. Oh. Okay, that's fine. That's I'm so sorry. Okay, that's what I wanted to check in with because I wasn't yeah. sure how that worked. Um, okay. Jazz was at the meeting as well too, and she is very heavily with the factory. So we'll probably chat with her about that. But um, yeah. we do want to work with Aegis in imploring, you know, obviously storefronts getting striked 
Right. <clears throat> uh, I feel like a lot of storefronts kind of just go by the wayside now. Like those ones who really don't care about it because there's tons of businesses in town that actually care about their store. But there's others that just, you know, what's the but? Don't. Stay empty for ages. And I mean, so. that's part of what Aegis was envisioned to do. I mean, I'm aware of prior storefronts that just sat inactive, unused, undecorated, where the sole purpose was just for somebody to, you know, rest their head at night and wake up. Mm -hmm. And that's obviously what we're trying to prevent. Right. There's also cases with Aegis. Uh, I know I spoke to Eve about this yesterday as mayor office to Aegis was... Um, there's some people that have been deported permanently. They're not going to be coming back. Their storefront is unused. Um, Aegis yeah. is also looking into that about getting those uh, seized by the state so that they could go back into the real estate market if uh, if other people wanted to use that location. Perfect. Yeah, it just it just has to go through the process and like it's it'll probably be if like let's say this one in particular, um, it just has to uh, it just has to go through the process. Like it'll it'll just have to be the the formal warning, an event that the person is not there to receive it, um, we'll just have to still do our do just like uh, like our part of it, and then right. we'll go from there. So it'll be at least a month for us to to do those checks. So it has to go with the rounds of checking all the others as well. Of course, right. At the end of the day, you know, we have to afford everybody due process. We have to follow the constitution and you know the rules that that sets forth. So we have Agreed, to be able yeah. to give people an opportunity to, you know, appeal any decisions that we make. We need to make sure that our decisions are supported by evidence. We need right. to make sure that, you know, we can give people the opportunity to a hearing if they want it. Okay. Um, how often do you guys do meetings? Like with just, you know, your task force? Uh, task force is about once every two weeks, I would say. But okay. I call the agents very often and check in with them. Okay. Um, that's all I have. Uh, Kiki, Ada, do you guys have any other questions? No, um, I've already asked. No, not really. Ahead. Yeah, same. Okay. Um, I mean reason why Nancy is part of my cabinet as well, too, is to have like that liaison <laughs> to you guys as well. So if there's anything that you guys need done or have uh, questions on from our side, you can always chat with Nancy. She can bring to us or we can just have another meeting like this if we can all link up. Yeah, but uh, I want to, you know, I want to implore uh, the storefronts being regulated and properly, uh, you know, looked after. Yeah, no, and that's the main thing that we are working on right now is Absolutely. just trying to get that Absolutely. storefront task force up and running and make sure that we have that enforcement mechanism in place. I'm just listening, man, in case there was anything that was kind of oh, ruthless. Good. Yeah, that's a, like I said, a, a lot of it was, I mean, within seconds of the, the winner being announced, we were getting people coming up to us asking about Aegis. What were we going to do about Aegis? And it's like... It, for some reason, a lot of people liken that name to the boogeyman because Jesus they Christ. just don't. Understand. She seems really concerned. So, I feel like she's not people saying. People are willing to read or ask questions. Yeah, um, no, I agree. The legislation is all there. They've been doing the work. People have been like, "Aegis hasn't done anything." <clears throat> when, as it turns out, what did you say, Eve? There was thirty-one active investigations open right now, working yes. alongside the PD. Mm -hmm. So it's like. Just because people don't want to read or don't want to ask questions, they just end Guys, up no matter, assuming please. and stirring and making I mean, stuff up and spreading that information. But it does seem like she has an agenda for sure. For months at this point. Yeah, people exactly. also don't approach people who are actively involved in it either. That's also something I've realized. I mean, me and Nancy had a incident. Um, we were looking for a specific um, business storage, and all of a sudden. People were assuming yeah, I think that she's. Uh, going I think she's expressing her own uh, emotions. That was but she's trying to mask it as like, oh, other people are feeling like this. But I think she's just projecting it. That's what and it seems like. Yeah, it was misconstrued as Aegis is going through stashes, and that was not. We cannot even do that. Right. I, I no, because that's a PD rate at that point. Yeah, I don't even properly work for Aegis. I'm just like a bondholder representative, but I don't sit in on meetings. I don't do anything with Aegis. We were there as San Andreas State Construction, which we said to them out loud, 
We're just here to yeah, thank you for the, eight on the keypad on the Mom. outside of the stash. Man, Jesus. And yeah. somehow it spiraled into Aegis is raiding us or something, which is like... Because clearly you're lying about why you're there. Yeah, we can't even look inside their stashes. We're just looking at the name <laughs> yeah. on the outside of the electronic keypad. <laughs> Oof. But that's what the city does, so yeah. anything yeah. to clear stuff up is great. Yeah, no, I agree. And I mean, at the end of the day, in a perfect world, you know, if everybody ran storefronts perfectly, we wouldn't need to exist. True. Mm -hmm. And ideally, we would like to not exist. I mean, we would like everybody to be able to follow the guidelines. And, you know, we'd like to be able to help to make sure that people, you know, that we can help them do what they need to do properly. Right. I mean... <laughs> To me, ages should be celebrated instead of feared because it empowers civilians in Los Santos to, um, you know, um, take powers into their hand to make sure that people are following the rules when it comes to the business commerce in Los Santos. Because a lot of times people just make their own rules as they go, right? And they'll make sure that things are done fairly and uh, people are not, you know, um, using the opportunity to abuse a storefront. That's why ages exist, right? And it could be very beneficial for everybody involved that way. The fair playing field for all businesses that use storefronts. Well, the people who are abusing the storefronts are going to be worried because they're the ones who are going to get punished. And then the people who are afraid that are not abusing their storefronts are just the people who are like, this they needs don't to round off now. So Everybody's saying the same thing at this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's also people that will lie, um, especially to me and Eve, about things that they need in the city, like <laughs> why they want their storefront or why they want their stash or why they want this. Yeah. And then they get really scared because they realize that they've been using it for not the reason that they do. I think the the the, the, the mayor and uh, uh, lady in white seems to be chilling, but she seems to have an agenda and as big well, time. Like building off of Bass's point of, you know, empowering the civilians. I mean, we are employing But them. if she has we an agenda to do those investigations. Well, I'm just assuming. I'm not sure if she does. But if she has an agenda and I guess the she works under the mayor, then I'm sure. Gives back. I'm all for that. Any other Wait. questions, um, Sexton? Uh, not at this time. No, I'm just glad we got to have the meeting, touch base, figure things out. You know, we're uh, we're very committed here in the mayor's office. Mm -hmm. I have to see if um, there's any other questions about Aegis. Feel free to send them either Tim's way, Bass's way, my way, especially if it's PD related, Bass's way. Mm -hmm. Okay. But yeah, at the end of the day, I think we just wanted to open up this dialogue to, you know, be able to work closely together and make sure that if you needed anything from us, that we would be able to provide that for the mayor's office. 100%. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Potentially. I don't know yet. We'll figure out how things go, but I'm just glad we had the meeting. Uh, mm -hmm. Get the, the gist of how it happens on your guys' side and hopefully you can work with and make sure storefronts are properly operated. And then, you know, anything with the SRU with the sanguine border as well too let us know yep will do all right awesome possum right. okay all right. we okay. appreciate you all coming down yes. thank you very thank much you for your time meeting. thank okay. you guys all right i think it was a decent meeting i think uh, the hawthorne lady um see the thing is she kept stressing the point that people didn't know what it was and it was scary and even when she got a reply, she stressed it again, which leads me to believe that it's her personal opinion that she's trying to place in the conversation. On top of it, none of them disagreed with her doing so, so I'm sure that they've discussed it in the past. It can't be a singular opinion for that reason. Mm -hmm. I think she was the only one voicing it. Yeah. And then, yeah. you know how, when she said, um, she said, well, it's an entity, people are scared of it, they don't really know what it is. And then whenever you guys told her what it, what, what it was, all she said was, yeah, 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 yeah. No it's, and opinion. the way I read it is like, they're not necessarily interested in the information you're giving them. And they're trying to acknowledge. Made up their minds? Exactly. And they're trying to acknowledge mm -hmm. what you're saying so that it doesn't look like they're sketch about it. Almost like it's like, yeah, I know, but other people don't. 